um, as people we see can, it anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Right. Thanks very much. We'll, we'll get started. Um, we've got. Uh, I'm just going to show you the next slide, just to give you a rough idea of what we've got planned for you for this this one hour session. But the first thing I'd say is just get comfortable, um, enjoy it. Myself and Josh are just going to run you through a few um, bits and pieces, as you can see on the screen now. This is obviously an invite to enjoy your lunch. You're not going. No one's going to be asked to come on the mic, certainly for the first half hour. Um, so enjoy your lunch, have a drink, kick back, and just uh, and just relax really, uh, while we we sort of give you a bit of an overview of what we've got. And that's going to include showing you a little bit of a taste of the new branding and what that really means for the website. It is functional, the new branding, so it's very much about trying to make it easier. Um, the network programs for the year. We've got a little ten minutes to talk about that, <clears throat> and then we've got. Um, a sort of half hour to have a discussion about uh, feedback from the network, um, what, um, what you know, some feedback from you as members, what your wants and needs are, um, and then then a little bit of a, a piece right at the end, which is just about um, we're now at the point where we're going to start to look at putting a steering group together. So we'll tell you more about about that. So certainly no plans to uh, to cut to anyone in the first half hour. So just just relax really. So um, let me push on. So the new branding, um, basically what's happened, the, the Wellbeing Network obviously started, was launched on May the 4th, 2022. So we just passed the second year mark and we've been working for six months on kind of understanding, you know, what the, what has the network become uh, really over the last um, um, over the last sort of two years and actually what you know how are people been interacting with it and have we, have we been able to separate different different functions of the network into different areas. And we thought you're going to hear us. If this was a drinking game today, you'd be all pissed within five minutes generally. But this is about connecting, exploring, and acting. So if we were to say every time you hear, <laughs> you hear us say connect, explore, or act, have a drink, you wouldn't get past the first five minutes. But there's going to be a lot of connect, explore, and act discussed in this next half hour. Um, but obviously we wouldn't do that because that wouldn't be very health improvement, would it? So let's push on. So. First, first to say, you might have seen the new brand uh, around the South Tees Wellbeing Network. It's obviously it's colourful. It's a big smiley face. It's kind of uh, South Tees is smaller. Wellbeing Network is more prominent. Most people refer to it as the Wellbeing Network rather than the South Tees Wellbeing Network. And of course, if if for any reason it needs to expand in the future, that can just change very easily. So the brand with the branding staying staying the same. Website address has stayed the same. Uh, Tees Wellbeing Network. It's just we've got some nice designed graphics. Uh, and materials now to to promote um, and so if you've got events on um, if you've got like community events or particularly system events so we can recruit more people who work or volunteer in the system um, then we're more than happy to come along we've got our pull-up boards we've got our leaflets and booklets and all free pens and all that kind of stuff with the new branding on so um, if you've got any events like that and if we can make it we'll be there so um, the new website layout is all wrapped around uh, Connect, Explore, Act, and that's basically uh, something we're going to sort of just dive into in a little bit more detail now. So this is actually these this visual is actually taken from um, from some of our leaflets and like booklets that we've got out there in our pull-up stands and so on. But we it's it sort of looks hopefully quite simple, quite kind of easy to read, but it's actually you know quite a lot of um, thought sort of gone into how we separate these things. So. I'm not going to read straight from the slide, but I will say that the, the connect bit is about connecting our members to each other, to their each of the services, to their experience, their wisdom and their resources that they've got as well. So it's about really good quality collaboration, isn't it? And it's about learning from each other. It's about how do we make those connections happen? So all the sort of bits that fall under connect are things about our website. So finding the right service. In fact, like finding help, finding support is what we've called it, um, which is where we've got our directories. We're going to go a bit more detail about that. You've got the local networks and partnerships, which we've got under Connect, and then we've got things that, that we do. So we've got our events, the training, the updates. We've got the um, uh, reaching out to other members with a request support from other members. We've got uh, the blogs and vlogs about lived experience. Maybe you do a new training course, whatever it could be, and you want to blog about it. Um, virtual briefings, exactly like this, that some organisations have, have taken upon to, to ask to do and have found a lot of success with that. And then, of course, all the personalised newsletters, invites uh, invites to events, all that kind of stuff. That's how we're, we're currently connecting. And I, we've slotted all those bits under connect. The second bit is about explore. So exploring is about developing an understanding of well-being issues, finding the solutions and learning together. So what is well-being? Actually, what do we mean by it? What are the factors that affect people's well-being? Why even bother? I mean, this is obviously very much about prevention. But first of all, it's about your well-being. People in the workforce, We our ethos is, if people in the workforce 
um, you know, are more aware and, and, and are practicing more for their own well-being, it's much more likely that it'll pass into their work. They'll benefit from it as well, of course, but it'll pass into their work and with the, with patients and clients and service users they work with. Blogs from our members, from you know all different corners of the system to share. Obviously, events like we had the, the last one we had on April 11th, um, and obviously different free trainings. So it's all about developing understanding about kind of uh, about what well-being is, all the different factors, and making sure all those connections kind of happen. So it's about so we've got connecting people. We've got exploring and then it's got act, which is obviously about action. Um, and that's about acting with our members, collaborating in the interest of community needs, making things happen, really. But with the focus on person centred, trauma informed working. So we want to see basically um, well-being in practice. Well-being in practice is about offers from the well-being network for our members to take you take advantage of and we'll talk more about that later it's about acting with others so whether it's about system change or it's about developing new services that's in, in act um, and it's about making the most of what we've got because we have got loads we've got so much good work going on out there um, and some of it is is really well connected up actually and is really thinking about people's individual lives and how people's experience coming through services needs to take account of all the different things that can be happening in their life. And, we, and there's some services that could do so much more of that, um, but just haven't, they're just not aware how to, and they're not connected. So that is, that is primarily as a, as a, as a, as a network, what we exist. It's about connecting, exploring and acting um, with our members. And so there's a fourth uh, side to this, which is basically why should you join? And so we sort of lump all that together into one sort of leaflet, one kind of promotion. It's about it's personalised. It's about working together. All the stuff I've just mentioned there, really. So we'll share. You can see these on the website uh, and have a look a bit more in a bit more detail as well. So we're very clear about kind of three areas of, of our functions. And we're very clear on kind of what the benefits are to our members for joining that. We've sort of been able to bring all that together. So the new website web layout is really designed to be simpler to use uh, for promoting collaboration and connections. That's what that's what the website is is meant to be able to, to do really. And what is the wellbeing network? What is it? What's emerged is who we are and and where we position ourselves. So this is what we say now. This is what you'll see on our homepage. This is actually pretty much taken from the homepage. So we're the people orientated network of networks for the amazing paid staff and volunteers who work in wellbeing improvement. So. I'm going to just show you what we mean by well-being. We're bringing our 15 def factors of well-being much further to the surface so people can actually start to see, well, what do we mean by well-being? You know, really make it clear. So when you see the website uh, menu bar, that's what it's going to look like now on a on a browser, on a tablet. If you're on a mobile, you'll have what's called a little burger menu, like little three lines, and you'll click that and you'll see connect, explore, act, and the different areas that fall underneath that. So we're going to go into a bit more detail and, and show you what that's about. But for those who haven't seen it before, um, when you sign up to the network, of course, you're given choices of 15 areas of well-being that you have particular interest in. The average member signs up to seven, seven or eight of those topics of, of the 15. <clears throat> but this is basically, in a nutshell, um, that when we worked with our partners at the What Works Centre for Wellbeing and, and local leaders to say, actually, we need to try and group it into 15 areas of well-being this is all the different areas that can affect people's lives it can affect affect the health in all sorts of different ways but ultimately affect the mental well-being which risks developing mental health real world mental health problems with symptoms and so it's all it is ultimately about trying to prevent mental health problems it, you know if you like me if you believe there is no health without mental health that it, it figures into almost everything we do <clears throat> then these are the, the 15 areas that, that evidence shows really has an impact on that and so it's huge, isn't it? It's and you, you can think of projects or programs or services that are tackling one of these areas. You can think of projects that are tackling three of these areas and some that are trying to do a really person centered approach and working across the system with partners to try and tackle it all because we're complicated people, aren't we? It's like, you know, even in, in every any single day, any sing, one of these areas can actually come up as an issue. And if you haven't got support, if you haven't got the resources to to get support with that. It can get quite complex quite quickly. So that's the 15 factors affecting affecting well-being. So <clears throat> first of all, connect. So these are the three areas of the website you're going to find under connect. Finding support, which used to be called uh, finding the right service. Now what this looks like, um, <clears throat> hopefully this just, should, should just flip, is um, so this is a new home page. Um, I'll just show you that. So you can see there, you can, you've can you got the menus, you can easily navigate. So if you click on finding support, what you'll find is uh, the links to all the different directories that exist locally. So it's making it really clear. 
Um, we've got those updated and we'll keep changing those and add, updating them as that happens. But just a quick reminder that there's no need to provide, you know, to provide any more directories in the area. I think we've got what we need really in terms of directories. In fact, we could probably could do with less. And I think the network is planning. Well, we know that we as a network, we want to be able to do a, a directories event and actually look at kind of what we've got and see if there's a way of kind of distilling those down, something that works really well. But that's that's a question for the people that lead those things as well. So finding support is there, that's under connecting. So local networks is the next one. And local networks is actually about, um, it used to be called partnerships. Um, and what local networks is about is, any, is people getting together um, whether professionals, whether volunteers, sometimes just entirely volunteers and um, around particular issues. And so we've this is all separated by the 15 areas of well-being. And what you can find in here is the name of the, the area of well-being and then below it, the networks or partnerships that we're aware of that exist. And again, it's an, another reminder to say, if you are aware of networks or partnerships that exist that should be on here under some of these areas, or sometimes more than one of the areas, then let us have the details. And all we ever need is the purpose, the name of the group, the purpose of it, who can join and how, and how to join to get in touch with. And that information is really useful. I've been contacted by several members who were putting together new services, who said the website was really, like had 90% of the information they needed to put a, a service offer together because it had the information about what services exist, how those people organize around those top, tack, tackling those topics as well. And that's what we're trying to do. So keep it simple. Next one is um, share your content. So I'm just going to hand over to Josh, actually, who's got a, who's going to go through this. Sharing your content is about um, is obviously about members putting information forward to the network. So Josh, over to you. Yeah, could you uh, bring up the website, please, Richie? Certainly can. There so when uh, I'll just go through the process for for anyone who um, isn't familiar with how to submit content or might be new to the network. Um, we have a process where our members uh, can use the uh, connect to our members or share your content page to uh, submit a form and to submit their whatever content it may be. It could be like an event or like a survey or something like that. Just anything you want to get out there to the network. Um, you just have to fill out the form. It takes about five minutes. We've tried to make it as simple as we can. And um, we then process that and uh, send it out to the network. Um, so this could be through a article on our monthly newsletter. Um, if your content is say like an event or something like that, that might not be, um, might be a bit more time sensitive and you can't get it out. Um, to the newsletter, then we can go ahead and do a, a single email call to action to uh, the relevant people. Um, we also can add your event to our, our website um, and any blogs that uh, you may want to send in as well. We have on our website, we'll talk a bit about those later. And um, in, a, in other special cases, we may be able to send an email, like a one-off email to very specific members depending on if the content um, uh, requires it. So we have a, um, a list of dates for the, the newsletter um, that just basically tells you when you can submit content and um, like the, the end, the sort of cut off point until it gets um, put into the, the newsletter. Um, and we got the up until uh, January 2025 there. So if you if you miss the uh, newsletter and it's time sensitive, we will take that into account and we can always get it out on call to action like the um, straight after. If not, we can always just put it in the next one for you. Um, we will say that uh, if you do have any um, event posters, image files or videos or anything like that, um, you will have to email them separately from the form. Um, it's just a limitation of uh, how our forms work, but as long as you just email them to us um, after you submit your content, then we'll be able to uh, just attach them uh, fine. And it has some guidelines on um, file size limits and um, some methods of uh, getting those files to us. Um, all right, uh, Richie, could you just bring up the uh, forms now, please? So just here we have a sort of the 
a new form that we're putting together. It's uh, slightly different to the one we have currently, and it will be rolling out um, sometime soon. Um, but as you can see here, it's just got your um, your, your basic fields just to fill out um, your information. So you've got your name, email, and then um, it then goes on to sort of listing the sort of uh, categories you'd want us to sort of focus on. So if there's, um, for example, like whatever content you want to submit, like your blog, a vlog, an article, uh, a call to action or an event, you can just um, tick the box for whichever one you want. Um, and then you can select an area for um, whichever whichever area from like red car to to Middlesbrough and we are both and we can send that out um, to members who are interested in anything going on in those areas. And with the 15 areas as well, like we of uh, well-being we we talked about earlier, we can um, actually segment our content to uh, on the newsletter to only appear to these people who have um, selected those um, options. So if you were to say submit something under mental health, uh, anyone who has uh, checked mental health and social isolation under their preferences, they will see that content and anyone who hasn't won't see it. So it only keeps, it keeps your information going to the relevant people and also um, sort of uh, keeps everyone's sort of newsletter like pretty short and snappy with only things they wanna see. So it really gets to the people who who matter basically. Um, and on this next uh, example, the you can select which age groups the content relates to. So if you if you're an organization that works with older people um, that are like retired, you can um, request that as a uh, as like a sort of segmenter. Um, you can even select like from zero to five up to working age adults, that sort of thing. And that again, just um, lets us sort of get that content to whoever might be interested in it the most. Um, and this is where the the new uh, form differs from our old one. Um, we've now sort of, before we just had like one box for entering your content, we've now split into three, um, which gives us a title, uh, the main body like text for your your um, your submission and then any website links contact info anything like that it's just to sort of um, speed up the process for us a lot of the changes to the form are very sort of back end ish where it's just helping us to make the process a bit quicker to um, get the content out to the network um, so we do we do ask that you you do submit your content through this form. Um, we do have a lot of uh, submissions coming in just just from uh, our inbox alone. And um, although we can it, we we can like accept uh, submissions that way, it doesn't have all the info we require to actually get it out immediately. So it might require a bit of back and forth, which can sort of eat into the time of the. Uh, of the turnaround for getting the submission out to people. So it's ve if it's very time sensitive, we do ask that you you make sure you're using the form. And we've even added a field now where you can enter a date um, to let us know um, if wh basically when when the content is not suitable to be advertised anymore. So if it's an if it's an event that's happening, say next Friday, you can put that date in and we'll make sure the the uh, the content gets out before then with good time. So it's not just going to be like too, too, a uh, little too late and uh, we can get your content to the right people at the right time. And uh, next slide, please, Richie. Um, so this is an example of sort of how our content is uh, displayed. This is a call to action. So this one in particular was for the, the men's pie club and um, they were initially interested in getting a facilitator in the area because they did not have any sort of operations in the South Tees area. And um, they put a request in. We got it, we got it out on a call to action um, and we got quite a few people at their webinar and they presented and eventually that led to them finding a facilitator within the South Tees area. And now like that's sort of like the impact that our uh, our content can uh, can have for our members. Um, so, yeah, if if there is anything that you feel like you can you can share with the network, feel free to just go on the website. Um, 
go to the connect section and uh, uh, share your content. And there's a list of all the guidelines and sort of uh, information you need to get your content out. And it's it's all very straightforward. And like I said, the form only takes about five minutes to complete. So yeah, it's it's all very simple. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Great job. And it is, I mean, we were, we're centering in, zooming in on, on content creation a little bit more um, because that's the, one of the most significant things. And I, we're actually going to probably develop that form even further in terms of the type of content because there's social media, obviously there's, there's events, there's training, there's so many different um, directions that content that comes into the network can actually go in and so we look at each content that comes in we have a meeting every two weeks review all the content and go right which you know what, what do we think is how this is going to fit because sometimes there might be a campaign briefing coming up and they could do something with that you just never know until what you see comes in so that's it and it's it's really like a really you know powerful way of getting that information out there in a targeted way and i should as, the last thing i would say on that is that um we have those there's a, a national organization called granicus who basically look at public sector like councils and nhs um, email networks like this and how successful they are and we actually have in terms of how many people open our emails and how many people click something inside our emails we're five times higher than the industry average which tells me quite strongly that at the moment there's something we're doing at least something right about um, having the 15 areas of well-being and targeting the information so that people probably think that when they see a well-being, I'm, I like to think, and you'll be able to tell me later if this is true, when people see a well-being network email, they know that it's it's not something that everyone is going to see, you know, depending on their choices. And it's possibly a little bit more, has carries more value than a lot of other um, email, you know, uh, newsletters or information you might get. That's what we hope for. So the second area uh, of the menus in the website is explore. And I've mentioned about the areas, you know, the areas that are within that. So we've got what is well-being. So simply like a, a new page, which is all about that. We've got mem members blog, uh, free training and events and campaigns. So I'll take you through these one by one. Uh, let's have a quick look at these. So um, what is well-being um, has been completely uh, redeveloped. We've got information there about kind of the What Work Center for well-being, um, which is done there for, I think 10 years of work and I've got a huge uh, depository of information having just wrapped up recently with all their work so and also the World Health Organization definitions of well-being and so how we are how we arrive then at taking all that information and ending up with our 15 factors that affect people's well-being and can actually have effects on their mental health their physical health you know and their whole you know um, the, the, the state of their life basically you know and how they actually how well they're coping in life and so we've got a whole information section here as it goes down it's got the 15 areas as, we, as we've said we wanted to bring that much more to the surface we had a recent conference on april the 11th about the medicalization of human distress so the fact that um that we we really do medicalize uh, mental health and human distress much more than we should and that actually for a lot of people it's really um about um really getting support with a whole range of other issues that are going on in their life that for any of us, if we had those things going on, we would probably find, uh, you know, ourselves feeling quite anxious, quite depressed and, and other types of symptoms that get lumped into a clinical model, which isn't always helpful for a lot of people when they actually what they need is support to, to, to the things that have been happening to them. So we talk here about, um, we had that event, by the way, is we're publishing the recordings and the, all the resources from that um, event that we had on April 11th tomorrow, um, on, on our website and to our members so keep a close eye out on your inbox you'll get access to all that very soon and these links here for click here to read about that resource will be uh, linked here live from tomorrow as well and there's also some information there about person-centered and trauma-informed working that's quite important to us person-centered as in kind of what people's individual experiences are and supporting that with one right door and then trauma-informed which is the question of what's happened to you and actually how trauma from childhood can really affect the way that people interact and present and even there's more work happening through the network soon with our trauma-informed champions about how we can make more services more trauma-informed as well so there's a lot at the bottom of this website of this page you'll find a whole load of information about measuring well-being that we've left there and also a list, list of really good quality resources around well-being as well members blogs has just been basically tidied up um, and what you can do is basically have a good search through here you can even submit your own let's say one of our members does a training course or attends a conference and has dis discovered something new which I think other people would want to read about write a blog I mean if you have to some, a lot of people have to write blogs for courses or do a write-up around a particular issue make that into a blog and make it make other people aware of it put it on our website and send your own 
send your own websites and information towards some of these blogs as well if you think they're interesting but they're out they're now presented in really nice easy to see um style as well um, we've also got um the free training space which oh bear with me a sec i think i'll just navigate to it for the sake of it so uh, free training is predominantly focused not not on all 15 areas of well-being it is currently just focused on mental health and mental well-being but we are open to the idea of if there's other free training available often tends to be e-learning or f like we've got the um we've got the uh, uh free, free mental health first aid training that's offered through you know through the training hub across tees anyway which is face-to-face -face training but if there's other training people want to add to this then we are open to that um, as an idea as well and maybe we split this page by the 15 areas of well-being and then start to to have those it might just be a link to another site that already exists but it's just helping people in the system navigate to be able to support people and yourselves better really as well <clears throat> and then you've got events and campaigns which is our main hub for anything including the today's event which was which was advertised uh, on here and there it is when well-being network members update so you people can click on that it'll take you through to our our booking page where, you, where you've you've all completed it and booked for today the next uh, event we've got for our well-being well-being for our members is is on saturday the 18th of may don't worry be happy and that, i'm going to talk about that a little bit more in just a second so those pages have all been refined what you can also find is as you're reading at the top here about events, it'll say that this page shows future events and it shows past events. And if you click on those, you can actually find, it'll actually take you straight down to the, uh, the part of the page, which is past events, and actually show you that, um, that section of the page. Just bear with me. Um, so you can see the previous campaigns we've had and the event from the April 11th, which was the wellbeing alternatives to, um, to the medicalization of human distress is all going to be posted on here as well so we'll link people through to this page where they can see all that so we continue to record we continue to you know gather resources and post them in one place so if you miss anything that we do you have a pretty good chance of accessing uh, you know some of the bulk of what's been out there as well all right okay so that's explore that's exploring well-being and how we can sort of all get ourselves on the same page really with with the knowledge and then we've got ACT. And so one of these areas is currently live. Um, the Wellbeing Pathway and System Change programs are actually in development at the moment and will be launched very soon. But the what members' wellbeing is obviously about you. It's about you guys. It's about the members um, of our network and your own wellbeing. So what actually do we do um, to support our members' own wellbeing? So we look at evidence. Um, we look at kind of uh, good practices that are happening locally so we can support local providers. And we use a bit of our funding. Um, which sadly has been reduced for this year, but we've somehow managed to still keep things going. Um, we are, one of the good news uh, things to share is that we are gonna be continuing the journals program. So we are gonna be doing three more rounds of three workshops for journaling. Everyone, everyone who attends those will continue to get a free journal that we developed with um, with Joe Hilton, who, developed, who, who, uh, who runs these workshops. So keep an eye out for that because we'll obviously email out people, our members and let them know. But if you are, on behalf of your organization would we'll be interested in running the journaling program with let's say half of a staff team for the first one half of the staff team for the second please let us know because we actually want we actually we can actually field a lot more member a lot more people to attend these courses and we'd like to see like work with several different organizations at once to get those their staff to attend the third workshop also features um whole range of different uh, resources that you can actually use, journaling resources that you can use in your own work. So you can use with your own clients, with your own patients, with your own um, service users as well. The Saturday wellness taste sessions are gonna be continuing. I mentioned the, the new one, the next one that's coming up in May uh, with Helen Bartram and will be more advertised throughout the year. The Books Wellbeing Programme with our local libraries is still going and all you've got to do is click on these uh, and read and find out more about how to access. And this is about, e-books, e uh, audio books of some of the great, some of the really good uh, well-being books that are being made available. And then we haven't um, advertised this yet. We haven't fully developed it yet, but this is a new program that's going to be running this year. And I'll let you read more about this later on, but a mixed hero's journey inspired program, basically, which is, we, we, it's likely to offer 30 places. Um, and we say mixed because it's, it's, we'd like it to be 15 members who are professionals or volunteers in the system members of the network and 15 people who are actually being supported by services who are sort of change ready 
and perhaps ready to sort of grow their confidence and go on a bit of a growth program with others. Um, and what we find is the evidence is pretty strong that when you mix people who work in the system and people who are ready to, for that change of being supported, it actually helps develop compassion, it develops insights into each other's work as well, and it's just a really positive way to do things. So that's going to be coming uh, down the road as well. So we'll be adding two more sections under ACT, uh, which will be about the wellbeing pathway um, and the local system change programs that run. So I need to continue conversations with those system change programs to make sure that they're all comfortable with the information we're putting on and linking um, to those programs. What we find is these these programs are doing great work out there um, and they really are, um, but it's not always clear about the, how, you know working with them or work them working together as well. So we're doing more on that. So, um, let me just quickly check. Whoops. Um, so, first of all, network programs planned for 2024 25. So, for your well being and for those you work with, that was kind of uh, the, the information we've just seen there. So, um, so, that is about kind of those everything from those well being sessions, journals program, everything we've just covered. The only thing to add, add to that is the campaign briefings. So we've had to actually, we've had to actually had, we've had to pull a couple of campaign briefings just because of illness and pressures within the within the team. And so while we've been re reworking our plans for the year and how we would get everything done with slightly reduced capacity, which is or it, it happens in the in the public sector. This is what we've got to adapt to. We've had to pull a couple of com campaign briefings. So these will re um, resume in June with a later mental health and movement one to to jump on the back of Mental Health Awareness Week next week. So there is, think of that as a follow up to Mental Health Awareness Week, um, and that's in partnership with Let's Connect in Hartlepool. And then we'll be doing more later on in the year in line with our campaign briefings. So we will return to those once we were back on top of uh, of our plans once we've got the, you know, all the website stuff finished. Next thing I would say is we're looking at a wellbeing pathway. Now, this is an, this, this is a, an extract from a page that I presented at the event uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to go into any, any level of detail with it now, but that website will, sh that web page will shortly be launched. We are also already at the moment for organisations, people who are leaders within their organisations. Um, we uh we have a basically a form you can complete and it's to express an interest in getting involved in the development of a well-being pathway which is going to start later on this year so we're going to be doing some of that i said i'm not going to go into any de detail with it right now but it's a case of um how the, the system organizes itself around people's individual needs to give people a smooth smooth journey from what they know they need to deal with to finding what's out there and navigating that system as well and doing that in parallel to what exists in in the nhs as well already and that's what it's about. So we'll come more to that later on. Um, that is basically it at this particular moment. Um, so I'm going to just, uh, we're going to leave the recording going, I think, Josh, is that right? Um, but I just want to make clear for anyone who, um, if you want to come back on with your cameras, you can do. And it is being recorded. But from this point onwards, we won't be um, publishing any part of the video. The only reason we're recording at this point is to get is to have a record of the feedback so we can actually if we miss anything in the chat or in our own notes we can we can keep that going.